another day of being stressed Pressure to win or be your best Feeling unheard or at home and sad It's time to take a break from feeling bad At least you got us Nothing is our duty At least you got us Life is hard but it's full of beauty You're not isolated, you're not alone As long as you've got us in your home At least you got us Welcome to Season 3, Episode 6 of At Least You've Got Us. Yes, no matter how shitty your life has been or how hard your workday has been, at least you've got us. God help you. Anyway, before we get into the episode, let me get my co-hosts into the room. And that is Matt <laughs> and James. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey. Hey James, Hi. it's actually nice to see that you. Was, well done. Nice. Did, did you did you did you did I you know, crank up the I monkey driving it. driving the bicycle that turns the generator that makes your 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 internet work properly today? <laughs> we share a dude who rides on his bike uh, in the back street, and he just goes from house to house. So apparently, he's outside my driveway today, which is really really nice. He's, he's yeah, wearing his fantastic. little backpack transformer of internet love and. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really happy, especially after Grant just gave our audience a reason not to watch us. But yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, feel, be, feeling feeling a little bit nerd this evening, Mister Towers. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's, Damn. It's that whole it's that whole pessimism for a yuck trope. You know, that's apparently when I'm really pessimistic, I, it makes people laugh sometimes. You know, I don't know. And I mean, you are fucking anyway. We're just monkeys. We're just monkeys on a rock. It's just <laughs> hurtling through space. <laughs> wow. Wow. Just I, honestly. I'm a big fan of bananas, but I wouldn't describe myself as a monkey. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's all we are. Beings. We're like we're just self. We're just self-aware apes, man. But anyway, oh. let me not get. I mean, let me not get too. <laughs> I need to be a. Uh, right. I need to be an optimist prime and not a negatron. <laughs> full existentialism this evening, which, which is very exciting yes. considering what we're talking I, about. I, I, I do feel it's, it's slightly yeah. ill-timed. I mean, we've got the news coming up, which is negative enough. Like, let's let yeah. Doug depress us. Oh, I don't know. I think there's going to be some pretty cool stuff happening in the news. Let's cross over All to right. Doug right now and find out. And now, the news with Doug. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's news on At Least You've Got Us. I'm your host, Doug, and we will start, as always, with the global statistics. Uh, with over 216,000 new cases reported yesterday, bringing us up to just over 20.3 million people uh, having contracted the coronavirus. Of that, just over 6.3 million are active cases, with just over 13.2 million people having recovered from the virus. Unfortunately, the death toll stands at 741,237 officially, but the mortality rate remains at 5%. South Africa did have a good day yesterday, with only 3,739 official new cases of the coronavirus rather than the 8,000 we've been experiencing. That means that we've only gone up to 563,598 cases officially. Of that, just under 136,000 cases are active, with over 1,417,000 people having recovered from the virus. Unfortunately, we did see 213 fatalities uh, associated with the coronavirus yesterday, bringing the total death rate to total total death toll to 10,621 official deaths. And the mortality rate in South Africa goes up a notch to 2.47%. In the headlines, Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Minister Nkwazana Damini Zuma has dismissed a contention by the Fair Trade Independent Tobacco Association that the High Court ought to declare tobacco an essential item. The matter is now before the Supreme Court of Appeal. Damini Zuma argued in her affidavit filed last week that tobacco was not a vital priority or indispensable commodity. She stated that tobacco kills 115 South Africans daily 
It therefore cannot be considered a basic good akin to electricity and airtime, adding that simply because a good is addictive does not necessarily follow that it is therefore necessary for human survival or required for basic human functionality. The minister contended that there was no reasonable prospect of features application succeeding. There was no compelling reason for the appeal to be heard. It should be noted that this will have no effect on Bats's case, as they are arguing uh, that the tobacco ban should be overturned for very, very different reasons. The Western Cape Liquor Authority has suspended close to 40 liquor licenses in the province since the start of the lockdown after the license holders failed to comply with the COVID-19 regulations. More than 110 investigations were also con conducted into various violations of alcohol-related lockdown regulations. The licenses were suspended in accordance with the Provincial Liquor Act, which states that a liquor license may be suspended on an interim and urgent basis where there is an imminent threat to the health, well-being or safety of the public. Spokesperson of the Provincial Minister of Community Safety, Kayla Ann Murray, says Minister Albert Fritz welcomes the 112 investigations conducted by the Western Cape Liquor Authority and the 37 licenses that have been suspended. Minister Fritz further welcomes the Western Cape government's cabinet's position on the safe opening of all businesses and the domestic sale of alcohol together with smart interventions. Keeping with liquor, South Africa's agricultural sector has joined growing calls for the government to reconsider its ban on the sale of alcohol. AgriSA said it was gravely concerned about the impact the current ban has had on the value chain, ranging from wine, barley, hops, fruit and maize farmers to glass manufacturers and processors. SA Breweries is the only beer producer that procures almost 100% of its ingredients locally for their operations and is severely constrained by the ban. The spills, this spills over to farmers who will not have takeoff for their produce. The same is happening in the wine industry, with many sellers under severe financial pressure. Omri Fonseil of Agri SA described the ban as corporate carnage. SAB, SAB recently announced it had halted five billion investments in the country over the next two years because of the ban on alcohol sales. Agri SA head of corporate chamber Michali Kala said their main priority is economic recovery and the alcohol ban is definitely not helping. ESCOM CEO Andre Dareta has warned that South Africa gets, should get accustomed to load shedding until next year as the power utility ramps up its maintenance. I, so I seem to remember the last CEO saying that we should get used to load shedding until this year. And my prediction is that if Andre is still CEO this time next year, then he will be saying to us, better get used to, to uh, load shedding until 2022, or at least who is then. I just, there's this phrase that's coming to mind in the back of my head. It sounds like broken record. Does that sound about right? Anyway, a family in Pumalanga is suing the ANC for 10 million rand over the death of their husband and father at a party branch meeting earlier this year. Prince Manzini, 45, was allegedly beaten to death by six men on March 15th at War 32 in Guchwa during an ANC branch general meeting held to nominate candidates for the regional and provincial elective conferences. His family accused the party of negligence, saying it failed to provide security at the branch meeting, though it was reasonably foreseeable, foreseeable that it could become violent. Mabuza attorneys acting on behalf of the family wrote to the ANC on Friday, demanding the party pay 10.1 million rand for the loss suffered by the family, including the loss of support, emotional shock, grief, and constitutional damages. I say, I feel very sorry for this family, and I hope that they get what they're asking for. I do, however, feel that all South Africans should take this under advisement and sue the government for walking down the street and having your cell phone stolen. I mean, it is justifiable and reasonably foreseeable that walking down the street in South Africa is likely to get your phone stolen. And as the government has failed to provide adequate security for that, perhaps we should be suing them for that as well. And finally, President Vladimir Putin said on Tuesday that Russia has become the first country in the world to grant a regulatory approval to a COVID-19 vaccine after less than two months of human testing, a move hailed by Moscow as evidence of its scientific prowess. The vaccine, which will be sold internationally as Sputnik V, still has to complete final trials, raising concerns among some experts at the speed of its approval. But the Russian business conglomerate Systema has said it expects to put it into mass production by the end of the year. I, ha I do know that another mass vaccine that was put into mass production too early um, 
was done by a character played by Will Smith that resulted in zombies everywhere. I am legend, anybody? Anyway, that's all the time we have for the news. Back to the studio. That was the news with Doug. Doug. Hello. Hello, everybody. It is dirty. Yeah, hey. That's better. Yeah, hey. So, Sorry. What a Yo, day, Doug. Yeah. What a day. <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> By the way, Grant, I, I would like to point out that, uh, that apes and monkeys are two separate species, so we are not monkeys floating through space on a rock. Just are we apes? point that out. Are we apes? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lawyer, <laughs> not a monkey. But, not a perhaps, monkey. I knew it. <laughs> perhaps if, uh, if this Russian vaccine has some serious effects on our DNA, you know, we can change and become monkeys, you know? You never, you never can tell with these, with these rational things. Who knows? Uh, well, but I must yeah. say, like, I'm, I'm not surprised that Russia is, like, the first to send out a vaccine. I mean, aren't they notorious for cutting, for, like, doing ethical shortcuts? I mean, for let, medical let's, stuff. Let's, let's, let's Aren't they it, notorious look, for that? For for years and years like... and years, Aeroflot, their national airline, was notorious for its poor safety record and its terrible customer service. Now, if that's the way they deal with a national airline, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, I, Russia. I, I, look. Also, I, I just, I'm not comfortable Russia's with not putting exactly anything called clean. Sputnik Five inside my blood veins. <laughs> Like I mean, <laughs> on top of on top of that, Matt, like Russia hasn't exactly got the best track record at the moment, uh, including a downed air flight, uh, MH one seventeen, uh, including annexation of Ukraine, uh, including uh, what else have I got? Here? Uh, election meddling. But uh, also when they banned the Chernobyl series because it was a little bit too realistic for them. I mean, you know, notorious is a word for Russia, indeed. But I tend yeah. to find, um, you know, being run by well, Russian Secret Service a lot better. Just saying. <laughs> it, it hasn't stopped foreign countries from ordering over a billion doses already. Jeez. Holy shit. Oh, really? oh, and you know yeah. that we're part of that because we're part of this whole BRICS connection, aren't we? BRICS, so yeah. we're no, but we're, we're, right we're, we're busy trialing the Oxford-developed uh, vaccine at the yes, moment. We are trying so that's our Oxford. link. Let's Please. let's also be fair that uh, that you know we can't really complain because of the way I mean the way we manage our national airline is, is hardly <laughs> much <better. laughs> This is true. I'm calling the okay. gale black. Same <laughs> place. Yeah. People who um, live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, I suppose. No, exactly. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> One it's quite funny that we, that we can. I'm saying it's say quite is, funny looking at the list at the moment of the top countries on the COVID-19 list, and it is literally. Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, go bricks. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what? <laughs> go bricks. What an alliance. What an alliance we've put together. Yeah. Only the best of the best, I say. Yeah. Let's say, uh, you know, if we're, if we're not going to, if we're not going to be on the top of the least corrupt nations in the world, we might as well, well be on the top of a list somewhere, right? Somewhere. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. That being said, you know, I mean, we, we, we can look at, uh, you know, this, this, this vaccine will be trialed further in the United Arab Emirates um, and the Philippines. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, it only has about a 10% success rate. So you know, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not that's worth, in, that's not worth, like, <laughs> no. Also, also, Doug, Doug, I believe that uh, Mr. Putin in his wideness, in his wiseness and prowess, one would say, um, he actually gave this to his own daughter. Is did he though, or is that just Russian propaganda? Like, well, like that's I've, that's that's what I believe. That's what was. That's what I think is being said. I mean, he I know he gave he it said, to his own family members. I I know he said that he did, but like, let's be honest. This is also the man who, like, it, you know, got a no. picture of himself doctored to have abs. Like, now that I, is prowess. I, I would what about like, the I would like to was say that I'm real. not. I'm not going to hold much stock to that um, that, pho that it was Photoshop that they put ads in. I mean, I've seen Putin <laughs> do some, some, some stuff. I would not be surprised if he actually has those abs. I would also like to point out that... What's the website? The that, that this vaccine was administered 
to only one of his daughters, right? Only one. <laughs> well, maybe he doesn't one. Have. He likes to <laughs> lose control. <laughs> no, <laughs> if we look at Russian leaders in their relationship with their children, one particular leader does come to mind, and that is Stalin, whose son tried to kill himself. And Stalin said, and failed, I'd like to point out. His son failed in his attempt to kill himself. And Putin said, typical, he can't even kill himself, right? So, I mean, oh, you know, Stalin said, <laughs> Stalin said, he can't even kill himself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Russians. So, okay, so have, now this, when, when is this thing rolling out? Do we know when this is rolling uh, out, Doug? Well, they haven't, they haven't launched the, the final rollout date. As I say, they're planning on... Um, they're planning on doing the final trial just to see if they can track any adverse effects that might come about. But um, <laughs> they want to have mass production begin operation by the end of this year, beginning of uh, 2021. You see, but this this, this also worries me because, um, you know, the reporting on it and, and the 10% efficacy, um, a lot of people are going to be um, skeptical and then when yes. other more successful vaccines roll out, people yeah. are possibly not going to vaccinate because they're like, this could be the Russian one, you know? Well, this is the thing. And as, as long as you have a moron like Trump, who's busy running around the country promoting hydroxychloroquine, which yeah. also nobody knows. I was, I was, I was just about to say. I, like, I think you need, to, you need to take a moment there. You need to take a moment there. Okay. The studies, okay. the latest the latest studies out of, uh, out of the... Um, the American Drug Administration, right? Yeah. Have mm -hmm. they found that the the, 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 the the head of the FDA um, did actually write a paper back in 2012 in which he himself highlighted the success that that hydrochloroquine, whatever it is, um, has see. had on corona type viruses. So Trump's information, while perhaps outdated, was not incorrect. And in okay. fact, the doctor himself is saying, yes, he did say this, but, you know, yeah. this particular virus hasn't been tested on. So, you know, we, we, we're that's still that's still in, yeah. in question. So, so wait, so wait, hang on. He published a study saying that it was it, it was efficacious against some viruses, but not COVID. So some coronaviruses. He, he, some coronavirus against coronaviruses. Virus. Back in well, 2012. That, that, that has nothing to do with, with Trump's claims that it's a great cure for coronavirus thing. Well, I mean, uh, that, it is a no, coronavirus. A, a no, but he's no, saying, yeah, this, but, I mean, he's saying COVID-19. He's No, but he hasn't, he hasn't actually clarified that in his, he hasn't said, well, uh, it's shown yeah. efficacy against some coronaviruses. He's saying, no, this COVID-19 virus can be cured by, by hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. It's but rampant. Yeah, and that's, that's basically like saying, and yeah, that's basically yeah. saying like um, this. This treatment cures hepatitis A, therefore it cures hepatitis C. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're I'm the same the, family, I'm but they're different strains. I, I, I am not even hearing about his taxes and universities scores as well as his hair. Like, let alone be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, and but he, I think this. But this ties back to their previous point about like you know being worried about when an actual vaccine does become available that's viable uh, to a degree that's more than ten mm. percent. Um, and it, it, Doug, I think it was something you were talking about um, before we went live was the fact of just keeping your eyes open, keep well informed, keep reading studies, keep yeah. like paying yeah, attention for real. to what's out there. You know, uh, um, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think I think that you know. One of the things that is definitely going to have to happen before you know, we start mass mass producing any sort of vaccine is that we are going to have to have proper studies done. I mean, yeah. it would be disastrous if we were to announce that we found a, a vaccine or a cure or anything like this that had adverse effects that were longer term or more damaging um, yeah. than, you, than anything else. But but you know, fortunately, about another another such thing that kind of came out into the public and had horrific consequences, Doug. Yes, yes, there was there was a case in the in the sixties and seventies um, of a uh, a drug that uh, a compound called thalidomide. Yeah, um, and this was you know, used all over the that world. It was, uh, it was, yes, yeah. well, it was developed. <laughs> you may have heard the term thalidomide, baby. I hope yes. you didn't take any. 
is developed well, by Grant, a, Grant shouldn't a have German, any problems. <laughs> no, by a German <laughs> scientist um, uh, who was involved in the sarin gas project. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as, as one always yeah, is. Um, his name mm. was Otto Ambrose, right? He was basically the devil's chemist. He was he was Hitler's scientist. He was the guy that said there must be a concentration camp at Auschwitz, right? Wow. And uh, following the uh, following the the investigation into this thalidomide, which resulted in babies being born, it, it attacked the nervous system. They were born with stunted arms and legs. You know, one wow. particular kid though, so it was born without the top of his skull. Yeah, mm. um, it affected thousands, tens of thousands, and it was it was quite devastating. Yeah, and it took it over like a decade when you resolve. don't know the effects of what you're giving people and uh, having handing out a billion doses already yeah. with a ten. Yeah, and I mean the anti-vaxxers are going anybody? to be going nuts about this. And this oh, is the problem. Nuts. When, this is the problem when you've got people playing roughshod with the agreed upon protocols, right? Mm. Then it, mm. it, it it empowers these fringe insane groups mm. to have their mm. argument this way. I mean, you know, if mm. if if this particular vaccine goes wrong, right? Okay, mm. the backlash one, that doesn't work. Well, then they ignore that one, or else you know, simple flu vaccines, you know, chickenpox vaccines, polio yeah. vaccines. No. In, all in question, not in reality, not scientifically. But in the minds of the consumers, it calls it into yeah. question. And that's what you've got to be yeah. very, very careful. And yeah. there's already I mean, what, that's what what you've on? always got to be. Sorry, that's that's why I'm saying you've always got to be clued up with your facts. And I mean, mm. speaking of being clued up with facts, we we got you some some of the nicest, <laughs> freshest facts on the bluff. Why don't we go to extra lessons? <laughs> your segues are getting better, by the way. Now let me take you to the Hello, everybody. That's right. It is Tuesday, and Tuesday is all me today. You are stuck with me. So if I am your least favorite, at least you got us. In, so, well, screw you then. But uh, as it is, I do have a few nice facts for everybody. I love you, Jack. So let's let's bring on uh, let's bring on our first fact and our homies. And that is right. The first fact is that banging your head against a wall. For an hour, burns 150 calories. Right? I like they did that all with emojis. That's that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was gonna I was gonna say it might burn 150 calories, but but have they figured out how many brain cells you lose at the same time? They, they the calories leak out of the wound in your head. <laughs> Matt, you're fine. You're fine, Matt. You're totally fine. Yeah. Okay. Matt, you're totally the, fine. The, and the, this is probably way better than your goal experience I, this is probably you, where are you listen listen jokes about my golfing experience can only be made by people whose internet actually worked yesterday so let's just get back in our box and let Doug give us the rest of the facts yeah, Doug, what were you going to say? Touchy. My point is that I think this is a cool fact for people stuck in lockdown because I mean what else are we going to do right yeah, yeah. that's um, true it's true. That being said, <laughs> you can also walk your dog for 45 minutes, um, which is <laughs> yeah. quite a bit less painful. <laughs> don't you? You have a cat. Pretty no, much. How? Do you take a cat for a walk? Dude, have you ever tried to take a cat for a walk? You can take a cat for a drag, maybe. You, I, when you put... <laughs> You put a a thing around a cat. Cat ceases to function. All right, they they like, <laughs> yeah. fall over. All right. This is it's like this is why you can take them for a drag and fall over. This is why there was that that YouTube craze of people <laughs> tying socks around cats and just watching them flop. You know? yeah. <laughs> because they, just, they stop working. All right. 
Right. Uh, yeah. Wait, I just want to go. I just want to go back to this fact quickly. You said studies found, right? Yes. How? Do you, do you <laughs> Someone did a study. I'm just. I'm just. How, I'm just, how I'm just <laughs> Do you, I mean, what did they? Do you think that they paid a whole bunch of people to beat their heads against a wall? <laughs> there was definitely a room somewhere at a university with a whole bunch of people who got paid to bang their heads. Like it, it, it was probably in the UK. Let's be honest. Well, I was thinking that it was probably in the US, and after a hundred, after they'd finished their study, all of the people involved in the study became Bernie Sanders supporters. So you know, oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ba -ba <-boom>. oh. <laughs> Bernie, I hope you got some aloe vera for that burn. <laughs> yes. Bernie, with Bernie was going to solve all the problems, guys. Don't hate on Bernie. It's going to solve something. Feet, right, of, of, of damaging one's head, right? Our next... Oh, we've lost the screen here. Our next oh, fact... My emojis! Game with the emojis, it's great. It's that a study by neurologists showed that some patients who suffered from brain trauma and have developed brain damage on the right-hand side of their brain have a compulsive, a compulsive obsession to tell jokes which they find hilarious whilst not finding other people's jokes funny. Uh, so uh, I, I know so many people who so many are like people. this. So many people. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it can actually be attributed to a condition, like it is an actual physical brain it's, it's condition. Brain damage. It's brain damage. Yeah, so it, uh, what you can basically, do is, Bang your head against the wall for an hour, right? Okay. <laughs> and then you'll find yourself hilarious and no one else. <laughs> Fucking hours of fun right there. That'd be great. <laughs> Keep myself busy for days. I mean, I already do. <laughs> <Got> it. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> you don't. You don't have to. You know, you don't have to have brain damage to find yourself funny and other people not funny. You just have to go to an Amy Schumer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got the one liners up tonight. Eh? Yeah, no, <laughs> Doug's got all the burns tonight. Amy, Amy Schumer, <laughs> join Bernie over there, please. Um, I yeah, have Amy and Bernie. Just... Uh, we have Obama. You're next in line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> anyway, okay. Anyway, um, in our in our next fact, uh, scientists studying a deadly disease transmitted from camels have also found that camels contain the pathogens from which the common cold was born. Ah, huh. right. Interesting. Uh, Camels Bastards. are able to transmit diseases to humans, and this is how we got the common cold. You know? yeah. th th but this is also how we got MERS, isn't it? Was from camels. Was it? No. I thought that yeah. was birds. Wasn't that birds? No, that's oh, that's MERS. that's avian that's that's avian flu. No, MERS is Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome. It was the one that came after SARS <laughs> that got everybody worried for a bit. Yeah. And then yeah, and then that, it kind of went away again. Yeah, then everyone reacted to it properly. <laughs> it, just wasn't, uh, it just wasn't as uh, as as virulent, and yeah, it's it's the Middle East resp respiratory syndrome. Right. Um, MERS. I mean, camels um, are gross anyway. They just spit all over people. Like I, I can totally yeah. believe. Yeah. Stop playing one a hawker loogie with camels, people. Yeah. They believe that it's, you know, yeah, camels, camels and bats. Camels, yeah, camels and bats. And bats. And bats. Cam camels and bats, uh, kill them all, kill them all. Don't, don't eat bats. I'm surprised, like, Ozzy Osbourne didn't start like a pandemic with all of his bat eating. I mean, yeah, did he know. really eat bats, or was that yeah. just a really he was bit, that really good? He bit the head of no. a bat in a concert, it was a the head of a bat. No, but, but but was that was that a real bat, or was it just good? It was a bat. animatronic, it was a real bat. Of... Was it a real bat? Good animatronic <laughs> bat. <laughs> he, he, he was metal, metal AF, dude. 
Like for real. <laughs> I mean, like that would be pretty cool if you ripped the head off of an animatronic bat, like this whole robotic like thing sparking in his hand on his like <laughs> oil <laughs> like, out of chin. That that would be more metal, I feel. That would be I would be more impressed with that. Than well, just there, there would the be a lot of metal. Bat. Yes. You're correct. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, believe that you're so dry, I feel like I can drink you. I don't believe that it was metal. I believe it was drug. But yes. <laughs> it was it was what? Drugs. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think that's yes. probably exactly yes. what it was. Drugs. I mean if 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 there is one guy that is immune to the common cold, it, it's Ozzy. With all of that stuff, he's you know, <laughs> yeah. I've got to be human to catch a cold. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think since he died years ago, it's just the cocaine that's keeping his body going. <laughs> <laughs> he's not no, dead. I'm making, I make a joke. Die. Sorry, I missed it. I completely missed it. I, I must have the camel. It's okay. Clue. Do you know they spell gullible with four L's? <laughs> what? They do? No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nah, nah. I feel like you're pulling my leg. If you, if you say orange backwards slowly, it also sounds like gullible. Egg, oh, cheese. Yeah. Egg-no-row. Egg-no-row. Egg to uh tries to get his mind around that, um, yep. we will move on to our next fact. Um, and that is that uh, by having smallpox scars, right? So, okay. Uh, in the 1800s, you were more likely to get hired. What? That makes sense. Um, Why? Yeah, because you'd already had it, and then you couldn't... Yeah, the reason was that uh, uh, employers saw the smallpox scars and were like, well, he's already had it, so he's not going to take time off work. <laughs> Which I mean, also brings around probably the first person who probably faked smallpox scars just to get work, and then he probably got smallpox and killed everybody at work. Wow, oh, you're just oh, a ray of sunshine today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn, Grant. <laughs> I mean, <come> on. <laughs> but you know it happened. Come on. Job. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's pretty sad. But it would it wouldn't have killed everybody at work because everybody else would have had real smallpox scars, thus not able to get smallpox, thus uh, no problem. Herd right? immunity. I, ah, and there you go. Ah. There is a herd immunity at play there, kids. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But, <laughs> in other facts, yeah. Um, interesting fact about the French, well, about the Louvre anyway. There's nothing interesting about the French. <laughs> the Louvre... <laughs> So large. Please, please step on over with Bernie Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Put all the front. Move over there with Bernie Sanders. What's your name again? You Sorry, have insulted my so owner. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel. You dirty English mong. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It's so large, right? And so full. That it would take a person 100 days to look at each individual piece. If they looked at each, each individual piece for 30 seconds, 24 hours, wow. 24 seven, it would take 100 days. Uh, that's why I didn't so, see everything. That makes complete sense. And, and how much of that art is stolen and or appropriated? <laughs> uh, uh. Does it really matter? Oh, how political. I mean, how political. You know, at the end of the day, it's sitting in the Louvre. Yeah, there's there's so a head from Easter Island. People have been stealing stuff. Definitely stolen. Donkey's ears, definitely. yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, know, you I see, mean, also, at the end of the day, like, with our insignificance in the universe, uh, uh a picture drawn by a five-year-old on a piece of paper is about as as meaningful as the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Grant, did somebody hurt you today? <laughs> <laughs> you could also go to a Tate Modern, the Tate Modern, and see uh, an equally good uh, good piece of artwork done by a thirty-year-old pretending to be a five-year-old. <laughs> um, we really need to push Grant's Thank you, masterpiece, Bingo. by the way. Thank you. This, 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 we, we, we never actually got hold of the canvas for Ma Grant's masterpiece. 
We yeah. really need to well, make that yeah, happen. People, people just, you know, they, they, they've seen enough shit art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> wow. I mean, I know I have. There are certain places where you go and people have art up on the walls. Um, and uh, I agree with my father in certain cases where it's not actually art, it's just decor. Right. If no. it can be mass produced, it's decor. Right. Okay. My dad always yeah. used to say art with a capital F. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Fair enough. It's not a, right. not particularly funny, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and then our final fact, right? <laughs> In eighteen thirty, oh, I was enjoying this. American Dr. John Cook Bennett added tomatoes to ketchup adding many vitamins and antioxidants to the sauce. He then branded it as a what? medicine to cure diarrhea, indigestion, jaundice, and rheumatism. So ketchup was originally a medicine. But what did it have before it had tomatoes in it? Yeah, what was ketchup? Yeah. What, what was that? You get tomato sauce, right, which is tomatoes, yes. you know, all, you know, all gold, right? Now, ketchup, mm. you can use other things. So you can use pineapple so long as you've got a selection of spices in it. You know, and you, uh, blend it, you, know, so you can do pineapple you know, ketchup. That sounds gross. Well, I've actually that made my awesome. own pineapple ketchup, and it was awesome. You made right? pineapple yeah. ketchup? <laughs> yes, but I did include a uh, some uh, some tomato sachets in it. You know, so... What's that? Uh, paste. Tomato paste. paste. Tomato Doug, paste to give it the right color. Yes. Doug, please uh, make us pineapple ketchup for like for for corporate company Christmas presents. I uh, for at least I, you've got I, us please, Christmas presents. I think we've just. Let's found be honest. That's when we'll probably oh, see each other again. Uh, <laughs> no, that's just right. Grant, we're yeah, never going right. to see each other again. Yeah, the, I think we just found the, the world. The, <laughs> what? I think we've just found something to sell. I think from now on, at least you've got us pa tune in pineapple. and buy buy some of our pineapple ketchup. Pineapple I'm ketchup. sorry, but I just can't. Yeah. I can't get behind that. Uh, Do you have fine. any idea how bloody long it takes to make ketchup? <laughs> four, and <a> half hours. <laughs> four and a half hours to make sorry. one bottle. Right? Sorry. Right. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Got no appreciation for the process. So, so, hang on. So, don't, so, don't put me next to the French. Don't put me next to the French. No. <laughs> yeah. yes. Okay. So, 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 new question though. Could could um, the tomato ketchup do any cure any of the things that he claimed it could, or or was this all just snake oil? Salesman type, type, uh, probably type not. Yeah. It's likely that uh, that there was a certain element of uh, of snake oil salesman in, but I mean the uh, the vitamins and uh, and you know stuff that that are in tomatoes are very very healthy for people. So I imagine that uh, you know it probably had some good uh, probiotics in it that probably helped with indigestion and helped with um, with diarrhea. Yeah. I would have I mean, thought it would have given you more of the runs than taken them away, to be honest. But you know, rheumatism <laughs> <laughs> and wounded. experience with Bloody Marys, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what, what what year was it though, Doug? Eighteen thirty-four. Yeah, like come on, guys. Like if if you ate like one apple a whole in the whole year, it would probably cure a whole bunch of diseases that you had in the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's, here's, here's a bonus fact for you. Um, just because I love you. Um, oh. Did you, do you know why it is unlucky to bring bananas on boats? Why? Because spiders because, would be in them. Because Grant thinks that humans are monkeys and we might have a war of bananas. <laughs> no, no, you're all wrong. Um, no, so when they figured out that the best way to fight scurvy was to feed all of the sailors uh, fruit with vitamins and minerals in it, they obviously <laughs> packed the hold full of, of fruit. Um, but the problem with bananas is when they go, they take everything else with them. 
So the what? bananas would go, and they'd take all of the apples and the oranges and everything else as well. So it was bad Where luck would they to take bring them? bananas to, to, to vegetable, vegetable hell. Vegetable hell, yes. <laughs> what, so they'd, they'd make other vegetables and fruit rot if they were. Yeah. If they went. Have, you, have you never, like, when, when your bananas go off, like, and you've got them in the same drawer as, like, your apples and whatever, they, they take the apples along with them quicker. Oh, oh my god, okay, guys. I just gotta go move my bananas out of my fruit bowl. Quickly, huh? <laughs> one of the uh, one of the the ways that they actually that the British Navy uh, under I think it was Captain Cook resolved the issue of scurvy was to introduce pickled cabbage to the the, the menu. Oh. God, on the Navy ships, hmm. basically, um, uh, what is the? There's a German word for it: pickle cabbage. Uh, sauerkraut. sauerkraut, right? Okay. Um, but this is obviously it's not a it's not a very British British food, sauerkraut. You know. Um, no. So, uh, the first night he's busy sailing, that he's introduced the pickle cabbage, and you know, nobody eats it. It just sits there, <laughs> you know, and nobody takes any. So. The following morning, he calls his officers into his study, you know, the captain's cabin, and he tells them straight as an order that they will go, they will take a large helping of pickle cabbage, they will eat it, oh. they will enjoy it, and they will go back for seconds. That was the order. Yep. Mm. As a result, wow. of course, and this, this, this just shows this just shows people you know, what people are. As a result, all the crew see these these officers taking huge amounts of pickled cabbage and enjoying it and getting more and they're like oh oh well that must be good stuff then and they go and they have helped themselves to it as well thinking that it's clearly good stuff if the officers like it and they want to be hoity-toity too and voila you've <laughs> got the people eating pickled cabbage problem solved I, you know, I peer pressure is good for your health you heard it from <laughs> us first <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> Gordon, Gordon thinks, uh, we need some serotonin, apparently. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 I can definitely give him drugs. That'd be nice. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't need hugs. Uh, I am not grumpy. Here's, here's right? a hug, James. Give, give me, give me drugs, not hugs. Yes, here's a I'm, hug, James. Not, it's I'm a, not a grumpy person. thing. James. I'm a happy person. I just Sorry. like to, call, call, to think no. I'm a grumpy person. <laughs> anyway, that's all the time we have for extra lessons. So, shall we head back to the main studio? Indeed. Indeed, let's go. Now, let me take it to the. I, I now have a bunch of bananas just sitting on my table. It's great. Well, apparently, if you, if you do let them go uh, and then take a big whiff, then you'll probably get high because apparently they give off high levels of ethylene, according to Gordon. Um, and that's what causes all of the other fruits to ripen quicker. So there you have it. I thought that James the name was, was like... That's also... <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's so bananary. <laughs> <laughs> so bananary. <laughs> oh my god. Ethylene sounds like the name of a grandmother. Uh, I mean, Ethylene is, is the name of my new garage band. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's who I want to know. It, ethylene, it's, uh, yeah. it's alcohol. It's alcohol. So, I mean, you, you, you take a big whiff of that. Uh, that'll, that'll, uh, that'll do the job. The guy's got a lighter. I'm just going to light this banana quickly. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. It is a hydrocarbon. <laughs> it is a colorless, flammable gas with a faint, sweet, and musky odor when pure. Sounds like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pure. I must say, Matt, you look like you could be... Um, you could be the model in a in a shampoo ad right now. The hair's falling just right. It does, but Thank only you. on the one Thank side. You. I know. I, it, it, well, this is this is a this is a carefully crafted construct just for the show. I'll have you know. <laughs> oh, I can... just like the patriarchy. Uh -huh. Oh, wow! Wait, wait to feel make me feel bad Come about to. my hair, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, 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 I would like to point out that it does not require Grant to make you feel bad about your hair. America, do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. but. I, I feel like you just have to say this you know like when i mentioned the patriarchy it, it you shouldn't feel guilty about it because you know what the biggest the biggest victims of the patriarchy are straight white boys the biggest victims i i Yes, because you guys don't, really... don't you don't realize you don't realize how part of the machine you are. I mean, that's true. I, that I will completely give you. I mean, <laughs> I I I just uh, did. I walk into a philosophy one hundred and one fucking class. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> I thought this is at least you've got us. <laughs> <laughs> However, talking about philosophy, yeah. <laughs> Dun dun dun! Was that a segue, James? <laughs> it's my segue. It might be a terrible segue, <laughs> but it was great. About, it was great. I I am a big fan of a particular podcast called Philosophize This, and basically the whole podcast moves through the beginning of philosophy, uh, finding its roots. Well, I mean, you could say finding its roots in Greek culture, ancient Greece, uh, moving through to the thoughts and thinking of today. And I read, or I heard, I listened to a very interesting um, episode, and I thought I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on it and our audience's thoughts on it. Um, but it's an episode basically about the Renaissance, and it's called Blast Off into the Renaissance. And he talks about how, uh, just kind of caught my attention, how the Black Plague influenced the Renaissance and how the Black Plague and a massive pandemic that wiped out about three quarters of society changed the way that we thought and it made me think how fucked are we um but <laughs> <laughs> well that's, that's a good takeaway for a philosophy lecture i suppose <laughs> yeah I, I was just interested because the black plague which was instrumental in the way that people had driven their economics and their philosophy and their politics was, you know, an event as massive as what we're kind of looking at today. And I just, I, I thought it'd be interesting to think about what the hell we're going to do after this. What kind of renaissance are we looking at? Like, well, I mean, what? it is, it is interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, like, you, it, it doesn't just apply to the Black Plague. I mean, so much of history is cause and effect. You know, like, um, mm. you could, you can look, just taking the 20th century for example. I mean, you got World War One. You go into a period of peace which isn't really peace and immediately drives into World War II, pretty much. Uh, Post-World War II, you've got this ultra-conservative 50s, uh, which is all about the nuclear family and everything. Then you've got the 60s and 70s, which are a reaction to that and the summer of love and all of that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. So, you know, and I mean, there is no doubt that what we are experiencing in the world right now is a seminal event. I mean, this will be looked back it's on in years to come event. as as a as a, a, a generational defining event. Um, and it yeah. will be interesting to know how it, how it will, I, I really hope that we take from it and, and, and build something constructive out of it. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hopefully we don't get I mean, calculus. I just hope that. <laughs> well, something more, more complicated than calculus. <laughs> I find it fascinating, like how in this little lockdown that we've had, in our little five months of solitude and isolation, like the, the movement and the, the, the collection of people and the tribalism that has started to occur is oh, insane. It's absolutely mm. insane. And like, I mean, this is a small pandemic considering the Black Plague, of course. Like, it has nothing on the yes. same kind of scale. But it's, it's a small still... pandemic considering the 1920 flu epidemic. This is the small pandemic. I think that we're going to find that this this will probably end up with a mortality rate of less than 2%, which is lower than, um, than SARS. You know, I think that wow. uh, what this is going to end up is going to be that one time when, yes, it was a little scary for a while, right? But we all went and stayed in our houses, and it turned out to be a little bit more overblown than was really supposed to happen. No, I, I'm I'm not sure about that. I I mean I know that I know that the the mortality rate is not as scary, and I think that yeah, it will look be looked back on in terms of like. 
that was probably a bit of an overreaction, but the way that it has affected the zeitgeist, um, I think, is is mm. is what's more marked. Um, and what is what will be interesting is that I think that despite the low mortality rate, this has entered the public consciousness far more quickly and far more um, globally yeah. than something like like the the Spanish flu in the 1920s or, or the you know but, but just, the, just by virtue of media and social media and yeah. all of that. And if you <clears throat> if you look at the individualism that is happening and the complete tear away from standard society that we're looking at, people staying at work, people working from the internet, like this is the exact kind of thing that they went through, and this is what created the movement that was known as, or well, it's the start of humanism which is kind of like our own individuality and like what are we in the world compared to the people that or the hierarchs that be like you can well, see I mean, the movement of people locking themselves in and kind of segregating themselves like are we going to segregate ourselves or are we going to do like what we do and what they're doing in America and join together for a certain cause but then that cause reflects mm. and creates another cause and like does that mean that there will be war is there some sort of conflict coming because of idealism because that's what we're good at yeah, especially millennials. But I mean, Matt, how long did the Renaissance go on for? Like, your <laughs> ICU is our history guy. <laughs> um, I, I have to admit that the Renaissance <laughs> is not my particular forte. I, it, I think that okay. this was about a. It was. It was. It was like a hundred years, wasn't it? Yeah. If yeah. you if you kind so, of I mean, look at like maybe the beginning towards when it was starting to die out and go into um, uh, what came after the Renaissance, it was um. What did come after the, the Renaissance? Was it... no, 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 the no, Middle no. Ages. Middle Ages. The Renaissance. Yeah, Renaissance was post Middle Ages. It was a high Middle Ages at one point. Just in case anybody didn't know that, there was actually a high Middle but Ages. There was. Well, there was, there was a, lot a of high Renaissance, and the high Renaissance only lasted about twenty-five years. Um, <laughs> now, yeah. this, this is the point that, that I wanted to try and make. There was thirty-five years um, of Leonardo da Vinci, fourteen fifty to fifteen nineteen. Yeah. Michelangelo, 1475 to 1564, and Raphael from 1480 to 1520. So it was they were all kind of around the same time yeah. in that mm. very short period. It was not it was not a huge it wasn't a, a huge massive period. time. And it yeah. was a positive Ooh. renaissance in that it was it resulted out of the the massive the massive deaths. Um, you know, 30 percent of the of the the, the European population was decimated. This, of course, left vast amounts of open land. It, uh, it resulted in the regrowing of forests because some towns, some trading routes, they were just completely wiped out. Um, you know, mm. I mean, it, it basically put uh, it put some it put you know Middle Ages global warming back a few years. You know, um, <laughs> but, I mean, what, what, what it effectively well, well, allowed the- was for people who were stuck with no space to expand because, well. My neighbors over there are dead. My neighbors over there are dead. My neighbors over there are dead. Nobody's living on their farms. I'm going to take my yeah. fences down and move them. Right. But it also, so it yeah. also started to concur into capitalism and it started to create like jobs for people and actually started to create like a sophisticated economy that we kind of look at. What I'm talking about is that we're sitting with, um, we, we, can't take, we can't take the, the digital boom out of the equation as well. I mean, we we've grown up with technology, so we take it for granted. But I mean, technology is new. It is so like an, the internet, computers. Um, yeah. You're taking that. You're, you're adding a pandemic. Um, you're speaking about turning back the clock on global warming. I mean, that happened. That happened with yeah. us as well. Um, think, you know, I a lot of a lot of factories closed down for a long time. I think we, we we are experiencing a second renaissance. I I would agree with James to be totally honest. I I, I think that I I uh, yeah I think that it's only going to become clear in a hundred years, so we won't know about it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, it, but it could be ex- it could be accelerated because of the internet. It could be well, accelerated I, because you know, of the internet. I think that the thing is, is like the one thing that is about history is that. It, well, my my approach to history is you can't necessarily read it as being there was an event and then that led to an event. It's a whole series yeah. of things that happened that co- contributed to, to something happening. So if you take like the Renaissance, the Black Death certainly played a part, but we're coming out of the Middle Ages and there was a 
you know, uh, uh, move into um, urban areas. Um, yeah. There was there was a bit more industrialization going. I mean, the, I just I just quickly Googled mm. Renaissance because I wanted to get a sense of my time period. Um, and they're talking mm. from the 14th to the 17th century, you know. So they're talking yeah. about three centuries years. worth of of Jesus, human okay. history. Um, yeah. And if you if you look at if you look at um, um, the time now, I mean, we've had the we've had the American century. Everybody at the beginning of the 21st century was talking about the Chinese century coming in. Um, yeah. So there's mm. that. Um, there's um, a the kind of Russian century. <laughs> um, there, there, there is there is the fourth industrial revolution happening. Um, you know, there is there's yeah. there's the move away from. You know, you could also call the 20th century the century of cinema. Now it's a century of mm. of TV, in a way. Um, so art True. is going through yeah. a lot of changes. Um, the podcast has become a, 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 a massive cultural thing. So there's all of these different things tying mm. in together. I mean, if you if you even in, the, in 2001 pitched the idea of, hey, let's four guys sit and do a streaming show and maybe that'll become a viable thing. In two thousand and one, yeah. that was that was, it just wouldn't have been a thing, you know. So the whole concept well, I mean, of not, to not even in, in twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so the, we can the, do it, but it hasn't been very viable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so go so out and buy your it, pineapple it, ketchup from it, at it, least you've got us. <laughs> It, it's it's interesting, you know. I mean, like the whole concept of, of arriving at an office at eight and leaving at five, um, you know, was already dying out before COVID nineteen hit. I think this has probably accelerated it. I think it's probably shown that you don't have to be at an office. You don't have to be at a brick and mortar space mm. to keep no, the the wheels of commerce that. turning. Um, yeah. Um, so I, mean, I think that's going to fundamentally the wheels of change commerce the way turning? that. You, well, you know, if you want to eat you, at the moment, yeah, well, <laughs> you, like, you, can't, you can't, you can't, you can't pay for your groceries in likes. So, but what yeah, about yes. innovations uh, in yes. cryptocurrency, and what about like Bitcoin, and what about it's the future? Still, of yeah, but you, you still need to earn it. You still got to find a way of making that money. You can um, mine it. Mm. You, there's actually physical ways of mining a Bitcoin. You, have like, you tried do. that? With your ADS, uh, well, you can do it. You can start <laughs> it only. <laughs> we'll never see you again. <laughs> yeah, you will never ever see me again. <laughs> I mean, you've, got to, you've got to look at things. You got you do have to look at things realistically, and I'm. I'm I think that you know the the way that the world has 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 changed and evolved you know, over the millennia of human existence. You know, we we've gone through bartering and. But I mean, the, the the idea of finance in terms of having a a physical, let's for lack of a better word, call it money, right? Okay, which is really just a favor, right? And being able yeah. to go to somewhere and say, "Listen, I have this favor. You take this favor and give me that," right? Yeah, that's pretty much mm. what money is. It's favors yeah. in mm. physical form. You can't yeah. remove that. It's it's not. Mm. It's not yeah, actually physically possible. The bar, to, I mean, to, the bartering system. But I mean, but we removed so the bartering get, system for the existence of the coin. So well, we, we surely it's really. viable that we can remove we the coin. Really. The, the, only difference between, the only difference between the system that we have uh, now versus the bartering system is now I don't have to carry 10 chickens to take <laughs> to take a uh, half yeah. side of <laughs> pig from my friend. Right? Yeah. I, I don't even need a credit card anymore. All right. Okay. It's the same that it, that that hasn't changed. We're still. I'll do this for you. You do this for me. It's the same. Yeah, but that's basic how society works. Absolutely. But that's how society will always work. Um, that's how we function with each other in this whole stream yeah, of life. You I, do yeah. something for me, and I'll provide a service that makes you better, as well as makes me better. That's what society is at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. No, so I think that, I think that while we are seeing changes, we are seeing changes in society. It's not going to be as massively drastic as we might expect. Yes, we will. We are likely to spend more time at home, you know, working from home, which could have a negative effect on social interaction, particularly when you take mm. into account that for the last at least one hundred years, people have met their significant others primarily online. Yeah. Um, 
no, no. Uh, another point that, that I want to make on that line. is <laughs> another point it's that I want to make. Like, <laughs> Twenty years ago, since millennials got afraid to talk to one another, that they started meeting <laughs> each other online, right? Like yeah. most people still actually prefer to meet a person in person. <laughs> I mean, yeah. here's, but, here's, I here's something else. Uh, I here's something else to throw into into the mix, though, is like I think that we're going to see a new baby boomer generation as well. Oh God, um, yeah, because. Because there are there are going to be a lot of kids born out of out of people sitting at home and doing nothing yeah. all day. But apparently, um, apparently scientists say that humanity will cap off at 10, uh, 10 billion. They say that there's well, going I mean, to be a I'm, I'm, decline. I'm I'm sure I'm sure that you know we we'll, we will reach a certain point where they just physically we cannot sustain many more. I, again, I think that'll happen way <laughs> after we've 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 all left the earth. But no, in no, terms of no but but if you look at that, if you look at that, um, the idea of like a baby boomer generation, how they reacted against their their parents' generation, that's what gave us the sixties and seventies. It'll be interesting to see mm. what the generation below us does yeah. against how we're we're living our lives. So that whole thing of like social interaction, uh, I yeah. think. I mean, I'm a big believer in the whole swing of the pendulum um, theory of history. You know, you see it go one way, and then okay. you see it come another way. And I think that we're probably pretty quickly getting to the end of minimum real life interaction. And I think we're going to see it swing the other way um, by the yeah. time our, our, our kids well, are we, entering. We're already yeah, seeing it with like eco buildings, like plant yeah. I think have <laughs> buildings there. that have like plants also, integrated into them. Well, I was, I was going to say, like, to the swing of the pendulum because yeah. we, we've, we've swung so far in, in one direction. Um, our kids are probably going to be like, Wearing suits and ties and <laughs> to rebel <laughs> against the sinful nature of us. Yeah. Right, so oh it's, my God, it's, God. it's certainly going to be very interesting. I think that the world in like 20, 30 years' time is going to be a fascinating yeah. place to look at. <gasps> Guys. In, in, in reaction to now. Um, what if we get like um, the opposite of vegans? Oh, God. What? What? Like, 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 like what they people they only eat meat. meat. Only meat eaters. And they like Only they make zombies. fun of people that eat well, vegetables. I tell you what, if Russia, Russia gets its vaccine out, then we will definitely all be <laughs> Yeah. A nation of zombies. I was, I was, yeah. I was gonna say, like in terms of our, the movement of community, what happened in the medieval ages, what happened in the Renaissance was um that we moved away from community and the sense of community from the dark ages, because uh, most of the dark ages, they're called the dark ages, but there's actually some really good things like building communities, building moral structures. And we swung into this idea of individualism and this idea of being alone. And if you look at America today, or if you look at the world today, the levels of depression and anxiety versus what was probably mm. not even existent in the medieval ages. Like that's one way that we've degraded. Mm, I, so I'm not sure can... if I agree with that. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm, I'm not sure. Sure. back to community. Which is what I, I I look forward to in the future Renaissance that I believe is coming. Okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Speaking of speaking of communities, <laughs> speaking of communities and zombies, uh, there is a community of zombies that needs your help, and that is the crew. Right. <laughs> These are people who would like to eat something other than just vegetables. Uh, they would like to be able to eat some meat, uh, if possible. <laughs> I'm sure also vegetables. If they can, but unfortunately they can't at the moment because their jobs have dried up and they do not qualify for UIF. So if you can assist um, with helping the People for Purpose get these guys a thousand rand pick and pay or shop right voucher a month, depending on funds, um, on the funds come from you, please get in touch with them at help at feedourcrew.co.za or you can donate to them directly by using the reference Feed Our Crew at their first national bank account, People for Purpose, 6278940571, and just help a few community zombies have a meal. Um, and, yeah, that's, uh, that's all, the, uh, all the time we really have. Um, oh, I see here on, that, uh, that uh, Gordon Wayne Towers is joining his brother in what is no doubt a very happy <laughs> night in their houses <laughs> wow um, do we need happened? to do we need <laughs> what happened uh, do we need... Can you, you guys have your third fight of your lifetime <laughs> <laughs> no 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 second second no we didn't not even um 
Guys, like, just remember, I'm, I'm, the bright, is I'm they, bright and cheery Benoni, as an act. Right? Okay? They live in Benoni. <laughs> it's finally gotten to them. All right? Okay. <laughs> That's what happened. All right? But All right. Honestly, guys, like, I'm bright and cheery. Me being bright and cheery is actually an act. Like, so, so is this, I'm is pessimistic this as help? fuck. Is this you calling out for help? I mean, no. this is that's no, no, just no. not true. You are this not bright and fun. cheery as an act. Don't bullshit yeah. a bullshitter. You don't yeah. don't come at us with the whole. I'm actually deep and moody and brooding and, and an emo, and I cut my wrists in my spare time. Fuck you. You're not like that. Don't wow. even try and pretend that. that. Dark very fast. <laughs> that being said, as, as your good friend, um, and I'm sure my other co-hosts will agree with you. As your good friend, if it is just an act. Keep acting. We don't want to know about anything else. Oh, that is all the stuff we have for the show this evening. That was a joke, by the way. If you are suffering from mental health, please get professional help. But that's all the time we have for the show. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow, bright and early at 7 o'clock um, for Binge Watch Wednesdays. Yes. Um, we will be discussing Binge Watch Wednesdays. Uh, we will obviously be going through our usual news. And uh, we will be bringing you a topic of vast and great significance um, that we will think of on the fly. All right. And that's all the time we have for you. Cheers, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>